Hey, thanks for stopping by Kenda HQ. My name is Super Dave, giving you the wisdom you need so that you can spend less time playing on your phone and more time doing important things like riding motorcycles. Let's go. Router question. Dear Kenda, I need some fresh rubber this season. Should I be looking for bias or radial? Well, the short answer is, it depends. But you probably want a little bit more substance with that answer, right? Tires aren't 100% rubber. A lot of times they'll have polyester, nylon, steel belts, or other newer materials like Kevlar embedded into them. They serve a few different purposes, but the reason that we started embedding them in tires is the same reason that we use rebar in concrete, for added strength under stress. Bias ply tires were the industry standard for years in the decades before most of us were even born. The fibers inside the tire are laid in an alternating pattern. This makes for a stiff carcass that can stand up to heavy loads and lots of stress. So let's think about what kind of motorcycles are carrying these big heavy loads. Usually we're talking the big old steel is real cruisers and the touring bikes that are loaded down going to Sturgis full of luggage and ladies. So on the other end of the spectrum, we have radial tires. Instead of the plies being laid in an alternating fashion, they're laid across the tire in a radial fashion from bead to bead. One of the biggest differences between bias and radial is the carcass construction. So radials will have a lot thinner sidewalls, the sidewalls will, will be more flexible, and the tire itself is going to flex a little bit more on the rim. And that can be good or bad depending on the application. Those thinner sidewalls allow for the tire to flex a little bit more. Around a hard corner, you're going to be having the contact patch stick a little bit better because those sidewalls are able to flex and that contact patch can stay in contact with the ground. And in a situation like that, that gives you improved feedback in the corner because effectively the sidewall and the tread are working semi-independently from one another. Let's compare that to a bias ply tire. Because that carcass is so hard and rigid, if you take a corner too hot, a lot of times what you're going to experience is a little bit of, of skipping or skidding. Once a flexed out radial loses its grip, it's more likely to completely wash out on you. Radial construction is a little bit more expensive, but it's certainly proven its worth on racetracks. Uh, that added contact grip is great for racers, and steel belts inside of a radial actually dissipate heat a lot better than a bias. If you're running tubes in your tires, you're going to want to aim toward the bias side. That means most off-road riders, most guys on, uh, on heavy cruisers, and anybody who's running center-spoked wheels. So there's the long answer for you. The choice between bias and radial comes down to your application and your goals. And here's the CYA of the day, brought to you by Kenda. Kenda recommends that you stick with your original equipment manufacturer's tire size and tire spec. If you want some help in dialing in which kind of construction is going to be better for your application, given to you with some good old Midwestern charm, hit us up at kendatire.com. Shiny side up.